Hey folks, welcome back. I'm your host, RR Slugger, and today we're taking a look at a set with a bit of an odd place in LEGO's history. This is 5541 Blue Fury. Hailing from the model team series that began in the late 80s, Blue Fury was released towards the middle of the pack in 1995. Model team sets were known for containing instructions for two different models using the included pieces, both of which featured a higher than average level of detail. The main model here gives us a blue hot rod, lavishly adorned with chrome silver stylings and a red leather interior. The bulk of the body is constructed using many different blue curved elements, allowing for certain contours that were impossible in earlier model team outings. Just like its predecessors though, the Blue Fury includes working steering. If you've built a model team car before, you'll be familiar with the building techniques here. The engine block here is completely exposed, allowing for car enthusiasts to get their drool all over it. <laughs> the dashboard has your typical gauges, and we've got a stick shift for Rock and Four on the floor. The boot of the car can also be opened for additional storage space, and in model team tradition, we've got a stickered license plate with the set number. Of the model team sets I have, I think this one's the most eye-catching, largely due to the vibrant colors and chrome pieces. The Bigfoot 4x4 is also from this later era of model team, and you can really see how the chrome silver elements separate these vehicles from earlier offerings. Overall, I think this model is fantastic and might be one of the best entry points into this series. Now, normally, this would be the point in the video where I would show you the alternate build for this set. Unfortunately, the Model Team series was designed with a fatal flaw baked in, stickered assemblies. Once you add the stickers to your set, that's it, you've locked in your final answer. Since I bought this set from someone pre-assembled, what you see is what you get. Just for the record, the alternate build looks to be some sort of low-riding go-kart, but I find it completely uninteresting when compared to the main model. I don't think we're missing much here. So is that the end of the story? Surprisingly, no. In 2004, the LEGO group decided to re-release this set under their LEGO Legends theme. Given a new name and set number, this hot rod was ready to hit the streets in style once again. That's not all that was different though. 2004 was also when the company shifted over to the new gray colors that we still have today. That means that the Blue Fury is one of the very few sets to officially exist with both iterations of gray. Not only that, but some parts like these Technic bushings had to be updated to newer molds. Some older parts even had to be pulled out of mothballs for one final ride. As far as I can tell, the sticker sheet was identical, though BrickLink doesn't seem to have a photo of the new version. The printed slopes in the car's dashboard are as authentic as ever. No modern replacements here. I don't care if we haven't used that print in over six years, bring it back! I know I'm making a big deal over this, but this is a re-release that happened nine years later. I'm afraid it's been... Nine years. Almost a decade had passed since its original release before the LEGO group decided to give it another go. That would be like grabbing a random set from 2014 and putting it out on store shelves today. Now, re-releasing a LEGO set is not a unique practice, but it's certainly rare. What makes the Blue Fury such a worthy candidate? After all, this is the only set from the Model Team series to receive the honor. Well, to be honest, I think this was a bit more of a crisis moment than we might realize. It's an open secret that in the early 2000s, the LEGO group was really struggling financially. This led to, and was consequently the result of, many experimental decisions as the mentality at the time was that the brick was simply going out of style. Between 2002 and 2004, the LEGO group re-released a number of sets, some even dating back to the 80s. I think there was an attempt to pick some winners to add into the mix, but this all largely reeks of desperation to me. It sold well in 86, let's see if we can do it again! I think Blue Fury was simply caught up in the chaos. Although, there may be more to this story still. 
16 years later, in 2020, we got to see this blue hot rod hit the streets yet again, this time at the minifigure scale. This small promotional set was designed by Pierre Normandin, and all I can say is, wow, this vehicle is nearly a spitting image of the original, carefully shrunken down without losing too many essential details. Probably the largest drawback is the lack of chrome since the original Model Team release was caked in it. Luckily, the perfect replacement parts exist. Beautiful. The original 90s radio antenna is missing too, but this is 2020. This car probably has satellite radio by now. Many of the original details created using stickers have been replicated here. A few more on the front of the vehicle would have been nice, but I'm not one to look a gift car in the mouth. This model is simply superb, and displaying the two next to each other really says it all. Pierre still works at the LEGO Group. In fact, his latest flagship model just released, a reimagining of the Pirates classic El Dorado Fortress. To my knowledge, these are the only two recreated sets under his belt, but if anyone in LEGO management is listening, please stop what you're doing, give Pierre a raise, and turn him loose on recreating as many retired sets as he wants. He obviously has an immense talent for it. So that's the story of the Blue Fury, a true LEGO legend. Once again, this video was brought to you by the Summer of Slug 2023, and my thanks go out to all of those who helped make it happen. If you want in on the party, check the link in the description. I've been your host, RR Slugger, and I'll see you next time for another video.